the IDWLA and MMI team arrived at OR Tambo Airport in Johannesburg. Scores of people along with the media welcomed Dr. Miles Monroe and his delegation with placards amid cheering. Mrs. Ruth Monroe also received a warm welcome with flowers from the Logos Bible Church and leading ladies of South Africa. The media had a briefing with Dr. Monroe and he said, I am humbled, honored and privileged to play a small part in the vision of New South Africa and I'm excited about the stage of where South Africa is presently. He also said, I have to be here because my future is tied with South Africa. Leading ladies of South Africa hosted a private dinner for Dr. and Mrs. Monroe along with his team. The host and president of this event was Slauzi Mogami. Leading ladies of South Africa have over the past years envisaged a network of leading women coming together for a greater purpose of inspiring the young generation of women. Dr. Monroe told the women the value of their worth to their relationships, home, organizations, and the world. God keeps having problems with men. And he tries to always solve them with women. But the men don't know they have problems. So they keep ignoring the solutions. God was wise. His first problem he found in all of creation was this problem. There's something wrong with this man. And the first solution God came up with to solve the first problem was not an animal, not an institution, not policy, not legislation, not government, not religion, not church. He said, I'm going to solve this with a woman. And so he made a woman. Day two began with a church service at Logos Bible Church with Pastor Chandre Thumbren. Dr. Monroe taught on kingdom economy and how to apply it to today's living. The people were blessed by such a strong teaching. We had such an honor to host Dr. Miles Monroe and his wonderful wife, Pastor Ruth. Let me say the message has been re arranging our mindsets and our mentalities. We believe that the kingdom message has always been a now message and so we just welcome Dr. Miles with such a rich royal kingdom message. It's our time for the church to, sh to shine. We are so honored to have man of such caliber to represent the kingdom of God. Dr. Miles Monroe, we just personally on behalf of myself, the Logos family, South Africa, we're excited to see what God is doing in your life. Once again, what an honor and a privilege to host you. We bless you, sir. We thank you for taking time to be with us. We honor you and we are so proud of your ministry, what God is doing to you, through you, through your books, through your television shows. You're just from city to city, from governments to churches. So you, you are a living example of the kingdom being made practical, of Jesus going from government to churches, synagogues and temples taking the message of hope and and love and reconciliation and redemption to the people so we bless you sir thank you thank you so much following the teaching people flocked to the book table and dr monroe signed hundreds of books dr monroe even continued at gospel fire ministries where the kingdom message continues to make a difference and change in people's lives Definitely the message was challenging, um, learning about the kingdom and, and the fact that as a pastor, you know, you preach a lot of things to people, but they never really get to understand what the kingdom is. So this has uh, inspired me to really learn hard and study hard about the kingdom. That's why I've got my pack of uh, kingdom pack here so that I can really get people to where God wants us to get to because uh, we'll be wasting God's time if we don't really get people to understand the kingdom and uh, begin to rule as God wants us to rule. Uh, tonight's service to me was an eye-opener, a confirmation of what we have to preach. My, my life is challenged, radically transformed, and I believe from today onwards, I'm going to preach the right stuff, the kingdom of God. 
Dr. Munro visited the ITWLA and MMI office in South Africa, where he met the staff and thanked them for their teamwork and their service to the organization. He said, nothing happens without leadership, and the team here in South Africa has displayed great leadership with the leading of Charlie Masala. Dr. Munro and Slauzi Magami were the guests on the South African Broadcasting Corporation's morning live show with host Vuyu Mbuli to talk about what true leadership is. What message do you bring today? Well, <clears throat> I guess uh, there's nothing in the world more important than leadership because mm -hmm. nothing happens without leadership. Leadership determines uh, what happens in the present and the future. As a matter of fact, history is simply the, the record of what leaders did or didn't do. So uh, if we don't get leadership right, nothing is right. And uh, as I always say, uh, leadership is not a right, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. And it's a privilege given to you by the followers. And so I believe that when you focus on leadership, you're really focusing on the future. You're focusing on the quality of the future that you really want. And one of the things I'm going to really impress on the women in the session this morning is that uh, uh, an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions if they're led by a sheep. And what that means is that leadership determines the quality of your followers as well. Yeah. And you cannot be better than your leader. So yeah. if you want to have a better life, you must improve the quality of your leadership. From there, Dr. Monroe was the keynote speaker at a breakfast session held by leading ladies of South Africa where he spoke to women in leadership. Look at these lions. Success. You gotta put this down. Now, I some, something that's very strange, they, when the first lion jumped on the beast, I didn't recognize what was going on. And I want to lay this to be very carefully. I saw the elephant on the ground, and I noticed that all the lions did not start to eat. They just held on to the beast. One of them went to his neck and dug his teeth into the jugular vein and suffocated him. And the elephant died, but they wouldn't eat. They just stayed there. And I was wondering, I said to the captain, why won't they eat? He says, look over to your right. And I looked to the right in the bush, and there on a little hill was a massive, beautiful, awesome male lion. Big mane. They just stood there watching everything. And suddenly I realized that only the females attacked. And I said to the captain, that's a lazy male. <laughs> He reminds me of most men, <laughs> watching the women do all the work. And then he told me the story about lions. He says, lions are very interesting creatures. Only the females attack. And females are the ones who are not afraid. They're the ones who initiate action. They're the ones who risk their lives at the hoofs of the elephant. Amen. They're the ones who jump on the back of problems and they won't let go. By the way, if your grandmother praying for you, just give in. <laughs> Why? She won't let go. If your wife is praying for you, just go ahead and give it up. Why? When a woman puts her hands in something and decides she's going to do it, you might as well just don't fall down, just lay down. <laughs> Because these lions taught me that the most powerful creature on earth is a woman. They are not afraid. Oh my goodness, I've been such a, a big follower of Dr. Miles Monroe and for me this was such a blessing. I, I seriously, when I think about it, actually I was talking to, to one of the ladies that I met on, on the Friday at the dinner and I was telling her that it is so surreal, it's unreal because I listen to him. When I'm at work, I'm listening to his uh, preachings. The one thing that I can remember, or two things really, that pop out um, at my head is the, the power of purpose and um, um, I think it's purpose for, for prayer. And he says, one of the things that I remember he says about purpose is that if you do not know purpose even for your own life you will abuse it and I thought that was such a profound thing as a young person growing up in South Africa and and just finding out what your purpose is your own identity being at peace with that and not um, trying to go out of your way to please people was such a profound profound thing I like the statement that he made about the lions um, that it's the women that go out for the hunt and for the kill um, it's affirmation that it's okay to be a strong woman you know the things that they there tends to be a need 
need um, to justify, um, you know, you want to downplay things when you're a woman, that sort of thing. It's okay. Be who you are, be who you're born to be and shine and then be who God has called you to be. It's a life-changing message. It was inspiring. Um, it, uh, I believe it's, I've been crying out to the Lord to get some answers in my life and uh, he's inspired me to now go and seek what my real passion is what there's something that I re that's been churning up inside of me and there's an anger that uh, you know when he spoke about that anger because I have been angry but I've been angry at the wrong things now I need to channel that anger and make sure that it, it works for God's purposes so I've been crying out to the Lord Lord what is my purpose now in life I am so so blessed so much so that in November I have to be at the Bahamas you know, I met Dr. Monroe for the first time maybe 15 years ago and he had such a great impact on me and my family because we, we, we saw the change from his teaching on that day. And I am just so blessed that I've, God has given me the opportunity again to be in his presence, but in so many, many ways and very, very closely. And for that reason, I have to just latch on because when he comes back to South Africa, I want him to be able to see the change and the impact. But I know and I know and I know that I have been tremendously impacted. And I know what makes me angry and therefore I know what is my passion and I'm definitely going to be pursuing it. The thing that's so amazing about Dr. Monroe is that out of all the books and as many times as you've heard him, it's amazing how it's something different that you get every time. You just think, what else can he give me? How can I possibly go to another level? So I have a ministry where we go in developing countries and raise up leaders. So I've just got all the things and I've read like, what else can I get? And today I sat there and looked at how I got a tip, we'll go back home and revamp everything. Just literally revamp everything to, even with our curriculum, to prepare people to understand that in the impoverished countries, in the poverty countries that we're working in, there is no excuse for poverty, that there's something on the side of them. And that story about the lion and the female lions being the ones that go to, I was like, this is it. And then at first I was thinking like those lazy men, like he said, but no, they were watching for the next generation because that's one of the major components of our ministry is to mentor the next generation. So at least they're sitting there making sure that the next generation is mentored. But as a woman in leadership, it spoke to me that the women are the ones that went to battle. They were not afraid to take on the challenges. They were not afraid to put their, their lives at death's door because working in developing countries like Sudan and in Islamic regions, we work in very hostile territories where our lives are at threat. And I was like, yes, Lord. And it was an encouragement to me that, you know what, keep on pushing, keep on keeping on, and then challenge and rewrite our curriculum to have a component in there to encourage the men to make sure that they are the ones also empowering the next generation. And so, of course, all the basic principles that he lays out. And you have to go shut yourself up somewhere in a room, get some quiet time because you have to soak it all in because everything that he teaches is layered. It's just layers. So you just got to take this slice, go meditate. Take another slice and so go meditate because it's just so much. And so I don't know what Bible he reads. I mean, it's like, how in the world? And I just, when I get to heaven, I want to ask God, what kind of Bible did you give him? I mean, why don't we get out of the Bible when he gets out of the Bible? But it's a gift that God gave him. And then we just appreciate this so much. As the evening continued, Dr. Monroe, along with his wife, Mrs. Ruth Monroe, were special guests at the Business Woman of the Year Awards dinner, along with the President of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, where they greeted each other and enjoyed the evening.